Attention Canadian seniors, your financial outlook just got brighter. The Canada Pension Plan is boosting payments up to $1,800 per month. Find out if you qualify and how this increase could impact your retirement in our latest video. Certainly, I'll write a 4,000 plus word script for your YouTube video about the CPP increase. I'll structure it in paragraphs and include your name, Daniel, and your channel name, Canada Benefits Hub. Here's the script. Hey everyone, Daniel here from Canada Benefits Hub. Welcome back to our channel, where we bring you the latest updates and insights on Canadian benefits and financial support programs. Today, we got some exciting news that could significantly impact many of our senior viewers. The Canada Pension Plan, or CPP, has recently announced a substantial increase in its monthly payments, potentially reaching up to $1,800 for eligible seniors. This is a game-changer for many retirees across the country, and we're here to break down all the details for you. Before we dive into the specifics of this increase, I want to remind you all to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. Here at Canada Benefits Hub, we're committed to keeping you informed about all the latest developments in Canadian benefits, and you don't want to miss out on any of our upcoming videos. Now, let's get into the meat of today's topic. The Canada Pension Plan has been a cornerstone of retirement planning for Canadians since its inception in 1966. It's designed to provide a stable source of income for retirees, complementing personal savings and other retirement benefits. Over the years, the CPP has undergone various changes and improvements, but this latest increase is one of the most significant we've seen in recent times. First, let's talk about contribution history. To be eligible for the maximum CPP payment, you need to have contributed to the plan for at least 39 years between the ages of 18 and 65. This doesn't mean you need to have worked continuously for 39 years, but rather that you've made contributions in at least 39 of those years. If you've had periods of unemployment or lower income, don't worry, the CPP has provisions to drop out a certain number of your lowest earning years when calculating your benefits. The age at which you start receiving CPP payments also plays a crucial role in determining the amount you'll receive. While the standard age to start receiving CPP is 65, you have the flexibility to start as early as 60 or delay until 70. Starting early will result in a permanent reduction in your monthly payments, while delaying will increase them. With this new increase, the decision of when to start taking CPP becomes even more important, as the potential maximum benefit has grown significantly. Your average earnings throughout your working life are another key factor in determining your CPP payment. The plan is designed to replace a portion of your pre-retirement income up to a certain maximum. This maximum is based on the year's maximum pensionable earnings, YNPE, which is adjusted annually. For 2024, the YNPE is set at $68,500. This means that if you've consistently earned that or above the YNPE throughout your career and made maximum contributions, you'll be in a good position to receive the higher CPP payments. Now let's break down some numbers to give you a clearer picture of what this increase could mean for different scenarios. Keep in mind that these are approximate figures and your actual benefit may vary based on your specific circumstances. If you've made maximum contributions for the required number of years and choose to start receiving CPP at age 65, you could be looking at the full $1,800 monthly payment. This translates to $21,600 per year, which is a significant boost to many retirement incomes. For those who choose to start receiving CPP earlier, say at age 60, the reduction would be 36%, 0.6% for each month before age 65. In this case, the maximum monthly payment would be around $1,152, or $13,824 annually. While this is less than the full amount, it still represents a substantial increase from previous years. On the flip side, if you decide to delay receiving CPP until age 70, you could see an increase of 42%, 0.7% for each month after age 65. This would potentially boost the maximum monthly payment to about $2,556 or $30,672 per year. That's a significant amount that could make a real difference in your retirement lifestyle. It's important to note that these figures represent the maximum amounts, and many people will receive less based on their individual contribution histories and earnings. According to Statistics Canada, the average CPP payment as of October 2023 was about $758 per month. With this new increase, we can expect this average to rise 
been inviting a large number of Canadian seniors. Now, you might be wondering how this increase affects other aspects of retirement planning. For instance, how does it interact with old age security, OAS, or the guaranteed income supplement? Yes, these are important considerations, as your total retirement income can impact your eligibility for other benefits. The good news is that CPP benefits do not affect your eligibility for OAS. You can receive both CPP and OAS payments regardless of your income level. However, it's worth noting that if your total income exceeds certain thresholds, you may be subject to the OAS clawback, officially known as the OAS recovery tax. For the 2024 tax year, this clawback begins when your net income reaches $90,997 and increases gradually until all OAS is clawed back at a net income of $148,718. As for the GS, which is designed to provide additional support for low-income seniors, your CPP income does affect your eligibility and the amount you receive. The GS is reduced by 50 cents for every dollar of income from other sources, including CPP. This means that if you're receiving the maximum CPP payment, you likely won't be eligible for GS. However, for many seniors with lower CPP benefits, the GS continues to play a crucial role in supplementing their retirement income. Let's take a moment to consider the broader implications of this CPP increase. On a societal level, this boost to seniors' incomes can have significant positive effects. It can help reduce poverty among older Canadians, decrease reliance on other social support programs, and potentially stimulate local economies as seniors have more disposable income to spend in their communities. For individuals, this increase provides an opportunity to reassess retirement plans. If you're still in the workforce, you might want to consider strategies to maximize your CPP contributions. This could involve ensuring you're making the maximum contribution each year if your income allows, or exploring options to fill in any gaps in your contribution history. For those nearing retirement, this increase might influence your decision about when to start taking CPP. The higher maximum benefit could make it more attractive to delay taking CPP until later, especially if you have other sources of income to rely on in the meantime. Of course, this decision should be made in the context of your overall financial situation, health status, and retirement goals. Do I need to apply for this increase? If you're already receiving CPP payments, you don't need to do anything. The increase will be automatically applied to your payments. If you haven't started receiving CPP yet, you'll need to apply when you're ready to start receiving benefits, just as before. How does this affect CPP disability benefits? CPP disability benefits are calculated differently from retirement benefits, but they are also subject to increases. The maximum CPP disability benefit for 2024 is $1,537.24 per month. This includes a flat rate portion, $542.49, and an earnings-related portion, 75% of your retirement pension. What if I've already started receiving CPP? Can I still benefit from this increase? Yes, if you're already receiving CPP payments, you'll see an increase in your monthly amount. However, the increase will be proportional to your current payment, not necessarily up to the new maximum. How often do CPP payment amounts change? CPP payment amounts are adjusted annually to account for changes in the cost of living, as measured by the Consumer Price Index, CPI. This annual adjustment helps ensure that the purchasing power of CPP benefits is maintained over time. Does this increase affect the CPP survivor's pension? Yes, the survivor's pension is also affected by this increase. The maximum survivor's pension for those under 65 is $707.95 per month for 2024. While for those 65 and over, it's 60% of the deceased contributor's retirement pension. How does this increase impact my taxes? CPP benefits are considered taxable income. With higher CPP payments, you may find yourself in a higher tax bracket or owing more in taxes. It's important to factor this into your financial planning and consider speaking with a tax professional if you have concerns. Can I still work while receiving the increased CPD? Yes, you can continue to work while receiving CPP benefits. If you're between 60 and 70 and working, you can even choose to continue contributing to CPP, which will increase your benefits through the post-retirement benefit. Now, let's take a moment to discuss some strategies for maximizing your CPP benefits in light of this increase. Delay starting your CPP. If you can afford to wait, delaying the start of your CPP payments can significantly increase your monthly benefit. Each month you delay after age 65, 
up to age 70 increases your payment by 0.7%. Ensure you have the maximum number of contributory years. Try to have at least 39 years of maximum contributions between ages 18 and 65. If you have some low-earning years, consider working a bit longer to replace them with higher-earning years. Split CPP with your spouse. Couples can choose to split their CPP pension credits. This can be particularly beneficial if one spouse has a much higher CPP entitlement than the other. Consider the CPP post-retirement benefit. If you continue working while receiving CPP between ages 60 to 70, you can opt to continue making CPP contributions. These will increase your benefits through the post-retirement benefit. Understand the child rearing provision. If you had lower income years while raising children under 7, you can exclude these years from your CPP calculation, potentially increasing your benefit. Keep track of your contributions. Regularly review your CPP statement of contributions to ensure all your contributions are accurately recorded. You can do this through your My Service Canada account. Plan for the impact on other benefits. Consider how increased CPP payments might affect your eligibility for other income-tested benefits like GS or provincial programs. It's also worth discussing how the CPP increase fits into the broader context of retirement planning in Canada. While the CPP is an important pillar of retirement income, it's designed to replace only a portion of your pre-retirement earnings. Financial experts often recommend aiming for a retirement income that's about 70% of your pre-retirement income to maintain a similar standard of living. This means that for most Canadians, CPP should be just one part of a diversified retirement income strategy. Other potential sources of retirement income include Old Age Security, OS. This is another government pension available to most Canadians age 65 and older, regardless of their work history. Registered Retirement Savings Plans, RSPs. These tax advantage accounts allow you to save for retirement and defer taxes until withdrawal. Tax-Free Savings Accounts, TFSAs. While not specifically designed for retirement, TFSAs can be an excellent tool for building tax-free savings that can be used in retirement. Employer-sponsored pension plans. If you're fortunate enough to have a workplace pension, this can be a significant source of retirement income. Personal savings and investments. This can include non-registered investment accounts, real estate investments, or other assets. Continued employment. Many Canadians choose to work part-time or casually in retirement, either for financial reasons or personal fulfillment. As we wrap up this discussion on the CPP increase, I want to emphasize the importance of staying informed about your CPP entitlements and overall retirement planning. Here at Canada Benefits Hub, we're committed to bringing you the latest updates and insights to help you navigate the complex world of Canadian benefits. Remember, while this CPP increase is great news for many seniors, everyone's financial situation is unique. It's always a good idea to consult with a financial advisor or retirement planning specialist to understand how these changes apply to your specific circumstances and how to best optimize your retirement strategy. Before we close, let's recap the key points we covered today. The Canada Pension Plan has increased its maximum monthly payment to $1,800 for eligible seniors. Eligibility for the maximum payment depends on factors like contribution history, retirement age, and lifetime earnings. The increase affects both current and future CPP recipients, though not everyone will receive the maximum amount. This increase doesn't affect eligibility for OAS, but it may impact GS benefits for some seniors. The CPP increase provides an opportunity to reassess retirement plans and strategies. While the CPP is an important part of retirement income, it should be considered as part of a broader retirement strategy. As always, we encourage you to stay engaged with your financial future. Keep track of your CPP contributions, stay informed about changes to the program, and don't hesitate to seek professional advice when needed. Thank you for tuning in to this extended discussion on the CPP increase. We hope you found this information valuable and that it helps you make informed decisions about your retirement planning. If you have any questions or topics you'd like us to cover in future videos, please leave a comment below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Canada Benefits Hub for more updates on Canadian benefits and financial support programs. This is Daniel, signing off from Canada Benefits Hub. Remember, knowledge is power when it comes to your financial future. Stay informed, stay prepared, and here's to a secure and comfortable retirement for all Canadians. Until next time.